there are problems that exist in this world that are solvable. They're solvable at scale and they're solvable in a way that can create fantastic entrepreneurial like opportunities, but that also fix valuable problems in society. I think when I say these things, a lot of people jump straight to AI. Obviously AI is the big thing right now. Everybody's talking about AI. Everybody's talking about Grok and closed AI and 035789, whatever the newest model is. And I love AI. Personally, I use I use it on a daily basis. I use it when I'm coding. I use it to brainstorm ideas. Sometimes I use it to kind of like think about things to put up on this channel. But I think a lot of people have kind of missed the forest through the trees and they've created like this idea that AI is the only way to really go in today's market. And they're kind of ignoring a lot of other things. And honestly, a lot of that is the fault of like the big business giants like Apple and Microsoft and everybody else just pouring all of their time, marketing and attention just straight into AI. I think this has been damaging, but today we're going to talk a little bit about an area that I think the average person can go into to start a venture that can honestly make a lot of money and an actual like pretty significant amount of like societal impact as well. So I talked in my last video about how I did a lot of introspection last year. And one of the things that I introspected about was that the businesses that I was building was probably solving a problem that didn't exist or didn't exist for enough people in a bad enough way to be like a you know sustainable business model. Basically, whenever you're creating a business, you want to be solving a problem. That is like not even business 101, that's just common sense. So whenever you're solving that problem, you have costs associated with your solution to that problem, whether it's hosting costs, whether it's time costs spent developing things, you have costs there. And obviously, again, business 101, you want to create a business whose revenue is greater than your costs, or you get money from VCs and you never have to worry about costs because the money keeps on rolling in and you don't ever have to worry about it. Um, but when you're talking about these problems that have these significant costs, ironically, AI is like the highest tier of business costs. When you're talking about the bigger players like NVIDIA, they pay tons of money for hundreds or thousands of PhDs. They pay tons of money for the hardware itself to actually manufacture and buy the chips and ship everything else and research and development and all that is a huge cost. They have tons of overhead. When you're talking about you know, Anthropic and XAI and closed AI and DeepSeek, they're all burning millions or billions or close to trillions at this point of dollars on research and development. What that means for me and you is that that is not an accessible business. If you want to like become a person who is working in AI and want to go like join one of these companies, sure. But the average person, we're talking about like even the top 1% of people, you're not going to start a foundational AI research lab, at least until you've graduated from one of the other ones. Now, this isn't, you know, doom and gloom. This isn't me saying go, you know, go just sit in the forest and not do anything. There are other avenues that you can go into. The main things that these companies are selling are hardware for compute, compute itself like in the cloud, or models. So those are the three things that I'm saying are relatively inaccessible for the average person to start a business off of. So what ended up happening is you create a secondary layer on top of those incredibly expensive R&D things, and that's where you start having people develop applications on top of these models. That in itself can be incredibly lucrative. You're creating, you know, chat GPT wrappers, you're creating applications that have artificial intelligence baked in in some way. That is super duper valuable. And you can create awesome businesses on that. Obviously, everybody's talked about the chat GPT wrapper phase. Everybody's talked about like all of the image gen stuff. There are then tertiary things that build on top of those, a you know, APIs and, you know, there's, there's endless levels to it. What people have ignored is that there are other areas outside of that. You need data for all of these things, okay? This data is like endlessly accessible. It's incredibly cheap and everybody needs it right now. These agents that everybody's talking about, these you know artificial intelligent agents that can do things based on the data that you supply them, need data. And this data can be something that can be harnessed and sold. 
So one of the you know biggest kind of examples right now is in Web3. So obviously Web3, the blockchain, all of that data is incredibly accessible, incredibly transparent. And there are a lot of problems there. I mean, we just watched the president of Argentina get rug pulled by like a teenager and a couple of other folks. We're watching like the barstool guy who has rugged like four times on a bunch of people. We're watching just tons of unprecedented levels of scams. We're watching like tons of this data be out there, accessible, stuff that you can build things off of. And very few people are doing it because gambling's more fun. It's like more of a video game. So like, why would I build, you know, database startups and things like that when I can just gamble? <laughs> that's kind of sad. But that's an area where there is a ton of need for people to do stuff with data. There is tons of borderline free data. I mean, spinning up an RPC node and getting access to that data, very easy. So there's a need, there's almost unlimited cheap supply of data, and there's tons of people out there who would be killing for that data. That's a business opportunity. Outside of Web3, outside of AI, there are people who are currently ransacking the United States government and pulling as much data out of it as humanly possible and publishing a lot of it or republishing a lot of accessible data that was already out there but wasn't super accessible for the normal person and the normal person didn't know about it. I'm talking about Doge, obviously Elon Musk's thing. They're pulling all of this data out and publishing it, mainly on Twitter, <laughs> and they're talking about the importance of accessibility to data. Now, tons of their, you know, things that they're publishing about seem like they're wrong or at least factually inaccurate but the point still stands that people want data to be able to make intelligent decisions in the political sphere there are people who need data in order to make intelligent decisions in the business sphere and this data is out there and accessible there's very very little data out there that can't be stored and accessed in a you know, fairly entrepreneurially like accessible way. You can create businesses off of these things and also better society through it by giving people more access to data. And this isn't really being talked about because artificial intelligence is huge and Grok and ChatGPT and all of this other shit are huge, but like there's more access to data now than there ever has been in history. Compute and storage are cheaper now than they ever have been in history. It is so damn cheap to spin up a Postgres instance and just fill it up with all kinds of shit and then just make it accessible through some kind of like cruddy UI. This is out there. So when I was doing this introspection last year and thinking about, you know, these different things, I was like, the data that I'm giving people access to through, for example, Grabber App, which was a startup that I had that basically made infrastructure scanning and intelligence easier. There's like a couple dozen people who are interested in that. Maybe if I had scaled it up, added a couple of features, their you know, business market would have been a little bit larger, but not really. So I was really like offering data that wasn't super valuable or that people already had a workflow to get. That's not the best way to go about things. Creating businesses based on data accessibility and data analysis and data mining can be a massive market opportunity that I think a lot of people are missing out on because they're chasing shiny things instead. This can be an opportunity to also implement some kind of, you know, AI features into it. But honestly, like the boring businesses are the ones that last the longest. The shiny object businesses are the ones that last the longest. It's just a little bit harder to get VC money for them. So I've gone on for about 10 minutes on that. Um, what I'm focusing on with building the ventures that I'm building this year is on data accessibility, finding areas where people have a need for data. The data is out there and accessible. The data just needs to be transformed in some way or made more accessible to people or may, you know, maybe they need the data to be crunched into a report that is human readable versus just JSON that can be like a huge opportunity. That's basically what intelligence is, like not like artificial intelligence, but like the government type intelligence is you're taking a bunch of information and you're condensing it down in such a way that it's like human consumable. That is a massive market opportunity. Other people have been doing this for decades. I mean, like again, threat intelligence in itself, which is where my background is, like that's been a thing for like 15, 20 years now, long ass time. So it's not like this is a new sphere or this is not a new idea, but people are focusing on it less because 
again, shiny object syndrome. That's going to be my focus for the next year or probably longer is making data more accessible and finding different entrepreneurial ways to make data accessible and like, I guess, a sustainable way from a business perspective. Yeah, that's about it. Take it easy. Peace.